Hey everybody, Mike McCallis here from the McCallis Collection. I want to tell you a really cool story about this big piece up here right behind me. What you're looking at uh, is a billboard that is 20 feet long and 8 feet tall and it's from 1941 uh, based on the saying of it. Uh, it's a long way to the last mile. The story of finding this piece is pretty incredible. Uh, there was a legendary uh, collector named Mark Smith uh, who unfortunately passed last year and him and I had become friends and he was telling me, he lived in Lynchburg, Virginia, which is where this piece came out of. He told me when I was looking at his collection, he goes, you need to go around the corner. They got a Chrysler sign over there you'd be interested in. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm always interested in that. He goes, it's a big sign. When somebody tells you it's a big sign, you don't know what their frame of reference is. That could be six feet, it could be eight feet, or in this case, it could be 20 feet long and eight feet tall. And so I round the corner in Lynchburg in downtown and walk in a consignment shop. The consignment shop has no air conditioning in it. It's in the middle of the summer. And it used to be the original dealership for this John P. Hughes Dodge truck dealership. So I walk in and I walked up to the counter and I said, I hear you guys have a big Chrysler sign. And the lady kind of was like, oh yeah, go look around the corner. And up on the wall was this magnificent piece. In its original location, it had a wooden frame around it that had begun to warp really bad. It was almost a, a foot of warp in it between the, the piece up against the wall and how far it was coming out. And I lost my mind. I, of course, had to have this thing. So go home, talk with my nephews, came up with a game plan that we will say is not OSHA approved. So we show up with two pieces of scaffolding that we stacked on top of itself and proceeded to cut the wood frame off the wall. And then I had to slice this piece, which these are actually the original pieces of how this came off. This was put up in six sections and then the billboard was laid over on top of it. And what's really cool, if you look at it and you can see where some of the damage is, and a lot of this was done prior to us, just over the years of the warping, you'll see these bright colors that are underneath. Uh, we've been able to figure out there are at least a total of three billboards mounted on this piece, the Dodge being one and then two others that are underneath. Unfortunately, I have no idea what they actually are, uh, which drives me crazy because the colors look absolutely phenomenal. So it took about two and a half hours in extreme heat conditions to cut this down and we were able to bring it back here to the museum and assemble it and get it back together where it'll be for probably the rest, at least of my life, So, because I don't want to move this again. But one of the cool things about having this museum is the support that the fans and people who just love Mopar history give it. So it was right before Carlisle that we normally go to in July, and a person contacted me and goes, Mike, I have a piece you have to have. That can mean a lot of things. Sometimes it's really good, sometimes maybe not so much. And he goes, you know that big billboard you got? I said, yeah, absolutely. He goes, I've got a countertop display that you have to have. This is actually a six-sided display that was meant to rotate and each side would advertise a different business. It might advertise Frigidaire, it might advertise the local movie that was coming, but it had the John P. Hughes Motor Company name. The fact that it was Plymouth Dodge Chrysler and DeSoto, which I did not know at the time. So we got this piece home, we repainted the top of it because it was pretty much destroyed, and then we just cleaned the wood on the bottom. This piece originally had a ton of little lights inside of it, and we actually replaced it with LED lights so that we could have it on because this paper is so thin and so delicate that if you even begin to touch it, you'll go right through it. But it's really awesome that somebody knowing how passionate I am about these things and recognize the name and then being able to work with me to get this piece here and connect this history up. And that's what this is about, you know, is trying to preserve this history, telling stories so that future generations know about it. So yeah, this is a neat piece. It's from the 40s. Uh, probably the, it is the largest piece that I have in the museum. And, uh, you know, sitting underneath it, because it's amazing how some stuff gets preserved, these three posters here, if I recall right, it's 1927, 1928, and 1929 is what those three posters are. They're back to back to back years, and I think that's what it is, either 27 through 29 or possibly 28 through 30. I can't remember exactly, but yeah, 
the reason I have all this stuff which people ask about is because you guys help me. You guys find this stuff, you connect with us, and then we figure out a way to get it here, and I figure out where to hang it. So thanks to all you guys. Thanks for watching the video. Please like, share, uh, and comment below if you've got any comments or questions.